In this video, I'm gonna to reveal to you what I think are the best VST effects plugins in 2020. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. We live in blessed times. Now I know it doesn't feel like it quite at the moment, but we really do. Plug-in manufacturers, in order to lure us into buying their paid products, give away free products, and they make them to quite a high quality so that we will be impressed. Now there's many to choose from out there in 2020, so I've narrowed it down to my top five. That's free effects effects plugins. Now, if yours isn't on the list or your favorite one isn't on the list, let me know in the comments down below after you've watched the video, because I'd be eager to hear which free plugins you've been impressed with recently. Now, before we do get started, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. Now, we're gonna be looking at them in reverse, finishing off with my very favorite plugin. So let's get started with number five. Five. So my number five pick for best free effects plugins for 2020 is not a free effects plugin. In fact, it's a collection of 37 free effects plugins in the Melder Production M Free Effects bundle. Now, as I say, there's 37 of them. I'm not gonna go through all of them today, but do check out the full list because there may well be one in there which you've been looking for. I'm just gonna focus on three of them. These are the three most useful ones in my opinion. The first one being the compressor which comes with it. Now this is a very transparent compressor and of course it's got all of the features you'd expect to see on a compressor with a nice display at the bottom so you can see what's going on. So for example if I adjust the threshold here it's going to show you where that is in relation to where the music is peaking right now. Okay. Now the other thing that you can see changing here of course is the ratio as I move that around and you've got your controls for attack and release as as you would expect there. Now you've got some nice variations on the knee. It's on a very hard or sharp knee here, which you can see. So the compression takes effect as soon as it goes over that threshold there. You can have a linear one here where it happens at a couple of different stages. And then you can have a nice soft compression here, which is really nice to use if you wanna make sure that it's not very obvious that you're using compression. There's also a side chain in here. I haven't used that, so I invite you to explain experiment with that and let me know how you get along down in the comments. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is the M equalizer. I'll just move on to that here. This is one of the best free equalizers going around. And in fact, one of the best equalizers going around. I think it's very useful indeed, very easy to use. You've got six bands here, easy to drag around and adjust like so, as you'd expect. And then this line here, which you can move to adjust the cue. Now there's lots more options for each node or band here. If you right click, you'll see a whole bunch of options for the node type, etc. So very, very handy in terms of ease of use. And then it's got some nice analyzer features as well. You can see the analyzer Analyzer switched on here. Now you can have it off if that irritates you. Um, and you've got some things like say a sonogram here. Um, now one of the things I find really, really useful is the areas feature. So if you're new to using EQs, you may not be very sure of you know what the various frequency ranges are. You can switch on frequencies here, which shows you where sub bass, bass, low mid, mid, high mid, and treble frequencies sit. So when you're watching people like me on YouTube and you have no idea what they mean by low mid, this will give you a rough idea. Well, according to Melder Production, at least. Another heat handy one in there would be say the drums overlay. This shows you where the different drums sit within the frequency range on a regular drum kit. Another one would be the keyboard overlay and this shows you um, where the frequencies relate to different keys you know, within the musical scales. So some nice handy features there in terms of visualizing um, when you're using your EQ. Now the last one I want to talk about in this collection of 37 is the loudness analyzer which they give you in the bundle. This is very very handy indeed and I think something that all of you may end up using if you're interested at all in doing mastering. This is where I think this really comes to life. Um, a lot of DAWs don't give you that good a meters along you know, with the with with the free plugins they normally give you. And when you're uh, mastering your tracks ready for release these days, there's some, some specific things 
things that you uh, want to reach in terms of loudness often. I mean, that's always been the case, but it's getting more specific these days, in my opinion. So you can um, meter things like luffs here, which I think is very, very useful in today's environment when you're releasing to streaming platforms. And handily, you can set your target. Now, normally it's going to be around about minus 14 for a lot of streaming services. And you can see, I'll just set that there, you can see how well the music which is playing is relating to that target. You can uh, see that they're not actually reaching up here at the moment to th what I would hope to see, which is a green area up here. Now, if the target was different, they would be reaching it fine. Okay, so you can see when you're reaching your target quite easily there, or when you go over your target, you'll be going in the red. So if you match this together with a good limiter maximizer, then that's going to be very, very helpful for getting results for mastering. Now, when you use these plugins, the free versions of these plugins from Melda Production, I do believe that the only thing you have to put up with is a little nag screen, which will appear kind of at the bottom of the plugins. I don't have that because I've actually own their full plugin collection so that switches that off um, but yeah it's I think it's in red somewhere at the bottom a little banner which will appear okay guys so that's a small price to pay when you get some awesome plugins for free four so in at number four, we have the Frontier Limiter from the D16 Group. Now this is a really nice, easy to use, and a nice looking plugin in my opinion. Now if you use this in conjunction with the metering plugin, which we were just looking at from Melda Production, then you'll have a lot of your loudness issues solved between the two of these, and I'll show you that in just a moment. A couple of major controls here, which you can see, the nice big controls here. One for threshold, and that's actually gonna be the control which is gonna make things sound louder as you start to push that down from zero and then also the overall output volume control which is going to be important in terms of setting your sort of peak level there is a control over here for soft clip now the documentation wasn't entirely clear on this but I tested it a lot and um, when you really push things to their limit and you start to peak what I did notice with soft clip on there was just like less distortion when it did clip and when you had it switched off there was that sort of very yucky sound that you get when you clip. Now over on the left hand side we have uh, the control input. So this is just the source which you're going to use to affect the limiting which is happening and then you have a release control fast, medium and slow release. I'm going to use it on fast release at the moment and show you what happens when I've applied this to the master bus on this song and this is how you're going to use this and it's going to take you literally seconds probably to set it up and use it and it's going to go something like this. Though the poison made me small Fell as far as I could go I ate love that made me tall Made me fall so you can see that I was able to apply quite a lot of limiting there before we started to nudge the needle around. So I just was adjusting it until the music was getting to that threshold. And that's a really, really quick way, especially for a quick master, you know, when it's not perhaps for a final release, but just to get in there, do that, just to get it up to a level where if you're gonna send it off to someone to listen to, it's at a decent level and very handy tool indeed. So I definitely recommend downloading the Frontier Limiter from the D16 group. Three. So in at number three, we have Valhalla Supermassive. And if you're in the market for a new delay plugin, then it's definitely worth considering this one. It's got a really simple look to it, as you can see. And this is very typical of Valhalla's plugins. They all tend to have this kind of look to them. You don't generally kind of have to read a manual to figure them out. The, the controls are fairly self-explanatory. And this one's really, really good fun to play with. Now, before I do show it to you, I'm just gonna play you the music, which I'm gonna apply it to first without it switching. Stone. So as you can hear, just kind of a guitar arpeggio there. Now I've set the delay according to a sort of a musical value, 132nd dotted notes, but you can set it in milliseconds as you can see here. Um, and as I say, there's some musical values which you can set it to. Now let's have it switched on now and I'll play the same thing again. And I want you to notice first off that I have the width turned all the way down. Let's have a listen and then I'll turn it up as we listen.
So if you're listening in stereo, then you should hear a nice spread there as I put the width up to 100 percent i kind of like it there now there's this warp control here and as i change it if it's playing you'll hear that kind of weird sound like this but that's not what it does don't confuse it with the modulation controls that we're going to look at in a moment here it only makes that sound while you're adjusting it the warp controls the relative length of the delay so if you have it on uh, zero then they're all the same length and as you increase it it changes so that's an interesting control to play with for a different subtle difference much shorter delays there okay then we have some controls over density and feedback feedback generally being the number of times we get delays and then the density here And then sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of modulation to the um, delays as they happen. I'm just going to add it subtly here, okay? And then we have a filter there as well. So filters are really, really handy. I like them using them on delays and reverbs as well. If I put the mix all the way up so that we're only listening to the delay and I'll say, um, make sure that I only am applying the delay to the sort of higher frequencies. So I'll put this up like that. I'll cut out a bunch of the low. Let's have a listen. So that's the sound of the delays. And if we mix it back in with the original, So we're getting those delays, but it doesn't interfere too much with the original sound. If we go to the other extreme and then just allow all the low end through, but then cut off the top end, you get a kind of a nice warm, muddy sound, which can be useful on sort of spit on sparse tracks. Have a listen to that. And then going on from there, you have a number of different modes available to you as well. They're kind of going off screen a little bit there, and they all have different characters. And if you go through them and you try this out, and as you click on each one, it'll give you a little hint as to what the character of that particular mode is. So all in all, a really, really nice uh, delay plugin to use. I definitely recommend having it in your arsenal. It's not going to be the answer to all of your delay problems, but it's certainly going to deal with a lot of them. Two. So in at number two, we have the Ozone Imager from Isotope. Now, this is a stereo widening plugin. And one of the reasons I've picked this is because you don't often get these as uh, your one of your stock plugins with your DAW. So if you want to do some stereo widening, you'll be looking for a stereo widening plugin, most likely. There's not that many available, but I do think this is the best of them. Now, you can get some weird sort of um, phasing effects from stereo wideners at times. They do need to be used with care i don't experience that too much with this one um, but i should warn ahead that you should always check your tracks in mono as well when you're using these types of plugins now it's very very simple to use and it's not really just a widening you can actually use it to make things more narrow which we'll talk about in a moment but first of all let's go through these controls up in the top left we've got some different metering which we can use and i'll play with those in a moment when the track's playing i like this first one here polar level particularly um, then we have our widening control it starts off in the middle with nothing being done we can make it more narrow by dragging it down and we can push uh, up and make it more wide and then we have this uh, control over here which I'll switch on, and that's called Stereo Eyes. Now, I'm not going to use this um, in this particular track because I'm applying this to a whole song, but you would apply this to, say, a mono track or a mono, mono channel, and you can use it to get a stereo effect. Now, they've added a new mode to this in the newer version. This is version 2, and I think version 2 came out within the last few months or so. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Now, with the second mode, I think it's a much, much better at actually taking a mono track and making it 
sound sound more stereo with a sort of a slight doubling effect. Um, with the first mode, which is the old one, you can get more of a sort of a, a phasing effect in there at times. You may want that. You need to use your ears to check. We won't be listening to that, but we will be listening to a whole song now and applying some width or making it more narrow. So I'll start off by playing it and dragging this down and making it more narrow. Yes, I've been down the rabbit hole And though the poison made me small Fell as far as I could go I ate love that made me tall Made me fall now, there's probably not too many occasions where you want to take the lovely stereo width that you've added in your mix and make it more narrow overall, but you may want to, so that feature is there. It's way more likely that you're going to use this to make the song sound wider, which is what we're going to do in a moment. And when I get it up to the full width, I'll start to show you the different metering as well. Let's have a listen. Yes, I've been down the rabbit hole And though the poison made me small Fell as far as I could go I ate love that made me tall Made me fall I met a mad man He took my So you can hear there, it has a really nice widening effect when it's at the top there. Definitely recommended the Ozone Imager from Isotope. So it wouldn't be a top five if I didn't have some honourable mentions, and I'm going to quickly run through them now. Those that almost made it, but didn't quite for various reasons. I've got a couple here from one company called Clang Helm. They make really nice plugins, uh, especially they do some nice VU plugins. They're known for that a little bit. Now, these two plugins here are a compressor and a saturation plugin. They do colorize the sound definitely worth grabbing hold of and downloading right away. I'm going to quickly run through to the other ones which I didn't put in the top five. One of them is Isotope Vinyl here. Now, if you want to make your songs sound like they're playing on vinyl with all the sort of scratchy sound, the different frequency ranges from different ages in time, like you can see here on this control, um, then this is a really, really good plugin. The only reason I didn't put it in the top five is because I don't think it's something that you're going to very frequently use. So I didn't want to sort of have that taking up one of the positions in the top five, but definitely check it out if you want to make things sound a little bit old fashioned and a little bit dirty. Now, finally, for my honorable mentions, I also have this one here, which is the Voxengo Span plugin. You will have seen it in a number of my videos if you've watched any of my videos, and it's a very, very good and comprehensive metering plugin. Probably the best of all the free ones certainly and maybe one of the best at all um, very very useful if you are going to do mastering as we were talking about earlier lots of different ways to measure peak and average volumes with this plugin and could be used on single channels as well as buses so definitely check out Voxengo's span plugin if you don't have it already one so in at number one, we have Nova from Tokyo Dawn Records. Now, I have mentioned this plugin before, but I've used it a lot more in the last year or so, and I have to say it's grown on me so much that it's really one of my favorite free plugins ever. Now, on the face of it, it just looks like an EQ, which it is, but it's got a really nice trick up its sleeve, which we'll talk about in a moment. But first of all, let's look at those EQ features. It's a four-band EQ. You can see the different bands here which is more than enough for most occasions and it's also got a high pass and a low pass filter there as well which is always very very handy now to change the nodes at all of course you can just drag them around with your mouse I like to do this on my mouse and use the wheel on the mouse to adjust the cue as you can see me doing there and also you can use the right mouse button to change the type of node that you are using there okay so very very quick and easy to use in that kind Kind of way and when you're using it you can also solo that particular band so let's have a listen to that I'll solo it 
So if you're really trying to find a very specific kind of frequency, that can be very handy to be able to solo it there. But the trick that it has up its sleeve is that this is actually a dynamic equalizer. Now, if you haven't used them before, you may find them a little bit confusing at first, but they can be very useful indeed because each of these bands can have compressor type controls applied to them. So say I've got this frequency here, which I kind of like, but then again, once in a while, or sometimes it gets a little bit out of control, that part of the guitar just peaks a little bit too much and I'm already emphasizing it, yeah? So it's not really good to overemphasize those parts. Then I can control it with the controls down here, the dynamic control. So I'll just click on this threshold button here and that switches all that on. I can set a threshold at which point I want it to start, start suppressing that band there. And then of course, I've got my usual attack release and ratio controls as well that you would normally see on a compressor. So that means as I start to play the music, you'll see that at these frequencies, um, if I adjust the threshold, you'll start to see them suppressed at a certain point. Now this can be very handy indeed. Now some of you may have used a multi-band compressor. It's quite a similar uh, concept, except I feel like you can be a lot more sort of surgical with these. You could even use it as say a de-esser or something like that if you wanted to have a lot of control over your de-essing. So a really nice plugin, and in fact I must say um, all of the free plugins from Toko Dawn Records are awesome, and I've also got all of their commercial plugins which expand upon the features of the free plugin, so definitely worth checking out. Now before you rush away, I've got a couple of small favours to ask which will only take a moment of your time. First of all, let me know in the comments down below which of these plugins is your favourite, and maybe there's another one which I haven't mentioned. Please do let all of us know about that. Secondly, if you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Have you done it yet? I'm gonna wait here until you do. Thank you. Now, if you didn't like this video for any reason whatsoever, hit the dislike button twice. And if you do like this kind of content, of course, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. And I will see you in the next video.